Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if somebody can develop PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, from a breakup, like from a relationship that fails. So this situation is talking about a breakup that doesn't involve any type of violence. So a bad breakup, a heartbreaking breakup, one that's sad and involves a devastating rejection, but again, without any type of violence. So consider this story, and this is a composite of many stories I've heard over the years. There's a young man who's heterosexual, say he's around 25. He's in a relationship with a young woman around the same age for about a year. This woman is the love of his life. They're happy. They have plans for the future. His family likes her. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, he gets stumped, right? She tells him he's not wealthy enough, smart enough, she could do better, they're not compatible, like with their personalities. She's not going to settle for somebody unless they're the perfect man for her. Whatever the reason is, he's given a reason, but it's all of a sudden. The rejection happens out of the blue. So he spends months thinking about her. Other women remind him of her. He thinks he sees her in public, but it's not her. He avoids serious relationships because he's worried that they could end and that could cause him a lot of pain. And then one day he runs into her, like say he's in a store or whatever, he runs into this woman that rejected him and it all comes back, just like the day it happened. So it's real again in that moment and causing pain just like it caused in the first place. Is this trauma? Can this be PTSD? Well. In order to answer this question, we have to know what is trauma. So technically, trauma is an experience that's severely disturbing to an individual. So that situation, of course, could be called traumatic. But then when we look at post-traumatic stress disorder, we see that the qualifying trauma section of that would not include that type of occurrence as traumatic, because they're really talking about a specific type of traumatic experience. There are actually four types of traumatic experiences in the criteria for PTSD. We see directly experiencing a traumatic event, witnessing a traumatic event in person occurring to others, and again, these are both life-threatening traumatic events, learning about a traumatic event that occurs to a family member or a close friend, again, life-threatening, or repeated exposure to aversive details of a traumatic event. So this was really created because some people have to review like photographs and video evidence of terrible events where people died and other horrible things happened. And they could develop PTSD from this experience. So the short answer to this question is no. Somebody can't technically have PTSD the way it's currently defined because of a relationship breakup. But of course, in practice, there are going to be exceptions. We see a lot of exceptions in clinical practice for a number of disorders. If we look at PTSD, there's the possibility that people can develop the symptoms of PTSD from playing extremely realistic, violent video games, from a bad experience at the dentist, from experiencing a property loss, like if they have a home that was destroyed in a fire, even if they weren't there, even if there's no risk of danger, they could be in another country and their home could burn down, and that could still be traumatic. So PTSD, the diagnostic category, was specifically created to be kind of narrow, only looking at kind of life-threatening traumas. But as I mentioned, there can always be exceptions. The question becomes, are there enough exceptions where the definition for PTSD should be changed or a new diagnosis should be created because we have people who are experiencing PTSD-like symptoms even though they don't meet the qualifying trauma criteria? Now, one could certainly argue that a loss is a loss, like a death is similar to a divorce, for example. This is a compelling argument. And if we look at affairs, we see relationships can end very suddenly when infidelity is involved. So, yes, there is a compelling argument, but we also have to look kind of the nature of the symptoms of PTSD. What exactly are the symptoms? What are the thoughts that occur when somebody has post-traumatic stress disorder? And does this match what happens to people who are involved in a breakup? Well, other than the qualifying trauma, we really see four other categories of symptom criteria for PTSD. We see intrusion, 
So this would be like intrusive memories or flashbacks. Avoidance, this is when somebody avoids thoughts or reminders of the trauma. Negative mood, this is actually kind of an expansive category, but it covers moods like anger and guilt. And also arousal, which is an expansive category, and it covers characteristics like hypervigilance and difficulty sleeping. These symptoms have to be present for more than a month, and they have to cause clinically significant distress. Now, this is usually kind of glossed over when people talk about the diagnostic criteria for disorders, but this is really extremely important, particularly when examining this question. A breakup can be devastatingly painful and can certainly interfere in someone's life to some degree, but would it be expected in, again, a large number of scenarios to lead to clinically significant distress? Is it interfering in some significant way with work? social life, with providing for one's basic needs. Do we see this level of interference? So that's something important to keep in mind. There's a lot of different symptom criteria for PTSD and clinically significant distress is required. So if a breakup doesn't lead to PTSD, then are there other possibilities other than those PTSD symptoms? Well, there are. There could be bereavement type symptoms. Breaking up is a loss, as I mentioned before, so that would make sense. It could also be an exacerbation of existing symptoms. So the experience of the breakup, the devastating loss, could be another mental disorder that's been aggravated, like generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, substance use disorder, and also a number of personality disorders could be exacerbated by a breakup like borderline, histrionic, narcissistic, or avoidant personality disorders. We could also see adjustment disorder. Now, a lot of times, adjustment disorder is kind of minimized and kind of thrown to the side, like, oh, adjustment disorder isn't a real mental disorder. But it is a real mental disorder, and it comes with serious consequences. And a breakup could, in some cases, lead to adjustment disorder. Another thing to consider is, depending on the severity of the symptoms, it could be normal. People can suffer quite a bit, and still not meet the criteria for a mental disorder. So it could just be a normal response to a horrible breakup. So as I mentioned, somebody can't technically be diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder if a breakup were to be used to try to qualify in terms of the trauma criteria, because that's not one of the qualifying trauma. But another question here would be, why does this matter? If people believe they have post-traumatic stress disorder, because of a breakup, why not just let them have the diagnosis? I've had people before ask me specifically for a diagnosis of PTSD for a variety of reasons. The most common reason, of course, is they believe they have it, but other reasons would include they want to show someone that the breakup really hurt. I've also seen that people would say that PTSD is the only mental disorder that people are really sympathetic toward, so they want that diagnosis so that people will kind of sympathize or empathize with them. And this really speaks to, I think, the need of society to have a better understanding of mental disorders and treat all of them as serious and treat all people with mental disorders with compassion. I don't think we want to get in a situation where some mental disorders are favorable to have relative to others. Of course, most people don't want to have any mental disorder, but again, talking about the relative positions of mental disorder, PTSD seems to be in a better place in terms of the way it's viewed. So with all this in mind, can we just give out the diagnosis when people ask for it or when they have the symptoms without the qualifying trauma? Well, in order to answer this question, we have to look at the other side too. I've worked with people who have PTSD for more traditional reasons, like the ones that are currently in the DSM now, that are defined now. So combat veterans, people involved in motor vehicle accidents, people who were violently assaulted, and they believe, sometimes, that it's insulting to minimize the diagnosis by giving it to people who don't have a qualifying trauma. Many are upset that the current qualifying traumas are too broad, even the way they are now. For example, the exposure to aversive detail qualifying trauma or the family member qualifying trauma. A lot of people with PTSD do believe those are too expansive, again, even now, the way they're defined currently. So to add things like breakups would really be insulting to many people in this group. So we have kind of both sides to consider here. 
We want to provide good care to people who have been involved in breakups and have PTSD symptoms, but we also want to respect that PTSD was defined a certain way for a purpose. And this really gets into the answer to this question. Mental health clinicians can validate feelings while using the correct diagnosis. We don't need to use a certain diagnosis in order to empathize with people. Different diagnoses have different treatments associated with them. So another way to think of this is if somebody has the wrong diagnosis, that could lead to the wrong treatment. And also, if we think of different types of treatment, like if you had a group of people with PTSD, and some, again, were combat survivors, victims of armed robbery, victims of car accidents, and you put them in a group with people who have the symptoms because they were in a breakup, that might result in kind of a mismatch in terms of seriousness. I think a combat survivor would have a pretty good reason to say that their experience is much different than somebody who experienced a breakup. And then one could argue, well, why not make a group for just people involved in the breakup who have PTSD? Well, the difficulty here becomes there's not enough people in this category to put together in a certain area into a group. So it just becomes a matter of logistics. So it would be difficult to find that number of people to form that group. Something else to consider is that if PTSD can have any traumatic event as etiological, so as causal, then do we need another term for the types of traumas that are life-threatening? So do we end up expanding PTSD to cover kind of everything in terms of traumas and then having to make a new diagnosis to cover what the old version of PTSD covered? And then if we do that and we have PTSD for life-threatening circumstances, another PTSD for breakups and other non-life-threatening circumstances, what happens then? Do we see an expansion of the life-threatening trauma type PTSD and we just end up in the same situation all over again? So there's really a lot of questions here in terms of why it's important the way we conceptualize PTSD. Another consideration here would be with post-traumatic stress disorder, like if somebody's involved in combat or say they were racing a car and they were in an accident, most clinicians would say you probably shouldn't do that again. You probably shouldn't get involved in combat again, like go back into the military. You probably shouldn't continue auto racing. Like You should probably avoid something that could easily lead to re-traumatization. Well, if relationships, if a breakup could qualify in terms of PTSD, would we start telling people not to get involved in new relationships? So there's some other kind of ramifications to broadening PTSD to cover everything. So what's the bottom line here? Can somebody develop PTSD, the symptoms of PTSD, from a breakup? I think you could make an argument that yes, that could happen, although I would expect it to be rare. The next question would be, should we redefine PTSD to capture this? And I would say here, there are a lot of factors to consider before redefining a mental disorder. So, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of things to really think about, and there's consequences to these different types of changes in the definition for PTSD that could be made. So, we just have to be aware of those consequences. Other possibilities would be to capture a presentation like this with a different diagnosis. I talked about that. And maybe to make a new diagnosis, but that's something that the authors of the DSM will have to consider for the future. And there are some different conversations going on, I believe, about how breakups and relationships ending badly can result in distress and symptoms. I don't know if any of these conversations will result in a new disorder or anything like that, but this is a dialogue that has been ongoing. So one last important point I'll make here. If somebody has a breakup and they end up with the symptoms of PTSD and they otherwise would meet the criteria for the PTSD diagnosis except for the trauma doesn't match, that doesn't mean that a mental health clinician can't treat them. And it doesn't mean that the mental health clinician can't use treatments specifically designed for PTSD. If a mental health clinician understands the symptoms that are going on, and they understand it could be PTSD, even though they technically can't diagnose it, they can still offer treatment to help that individual through those post-traumatic stress symptoms. So treatment is still possible, even if we don't really necessarily have the correct diagnostic categories available to capture this construct. So I know whenever I talk about PTSD and relationships and infidelity in these topics, there are always going to be a lot of different opinions. If you agree or disagree with me or have other opinions, please put those in the comments. 
these comments always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of can a breakup cause PTSD to be interesting. Thanks for watching.